to another chapter in this mutant saga. I'm your host, the multi-sighted Funky M. Now, mutation isn't a disability, or a chronic illness, though sometimes it can feel like one. And while some mutants might wish for a cure, others, as we've seen, are defined by their abilities, their otherness. Which brings us back to the reason we're all here today, the third of the X-Men movies, X-Men 3, The Last Stand. Released in 2006, X-Men 3 was somewhat of a departure for the franchise, as without director Brian Singer, a slew of directors were lined up, and Brett Ratner would eventually take the helm. In this movie, a pioneering doctor creates a serum that can suppress mutation, but there are those who would see that this cure never comes to light. Coupled with the fact that Jean Grey isn't quite dead, you would seem to have the recipe for another rip-roaring slice of mutant mayhem. But can the product live up to the potential? Only one way to find out, humans! So let's continue our mutant-thon with X-Men 3 The Last Stand. We opened 20 years before, as Charles and Eric, this saga's real protagonists, meet a very special young girl. Snap back to the present, as our heroes are caught in what seems to be a very dark future. But shock! It was just a simulation! Oh man, the danger room. You know, nothing can prepare you for it. And it can get quite brutal. I still have scars. And Wolverine was only substituting for Cyclops, who still mourns his lost love. In Washington, we discover the fate of Mystique. And a new mission for Secretary McCoy, who chooses to inform his longtime friend of a cure for mutation. And it isn't crazy to imagine that some mutants might consider taking a cure if ever one was made available. And if I'm honest, I've had days where I thought like that too. I mean, you don't even want to know what I might have half seen out of the corner of my eyes. Cyclops returns to the scene of Jean's demise, spurred by the whispers in his head. And sure enough, Jean returns from the lake bed, seemingly none the worse for wear. But our lovers share a kiss that is felt all the way back to the mansion. Whoa, that's got to be some kiss. Best I ever got was a few pecks from me teammates. Yeah, the professor didn't really allow fraternisation on the school grounds, so... What's to do? Storm and Wolverine recover Jean, but where's Cyclops? That question is glossed over because the mutant cure is ready for distribution. But its first recipient suddenly has second thoughts. Magneto catches up with his captured comrade and stages the smallest prison breakout in history. You know, I look at that juggernaut. He doesn't have the aura of a mutant. You know what I do see? Swirling red bands. And a bunch of letters. A C, a Y, two T's, an O, an R, an A and a K. Witness, however, the rewards of loyalty. She took a cure dart for him, and he can't even lend her his cloak to cover her now human nudity? That's cold, man. In all senses of the word. I mean, you got like a metal inside truck, and in the outside it's like the woods. Like a lonely road in the woods. Cold. I'm getting cold just thinking about it, man. Back at the mansion, Jean awakes. Or rather, Phoenix awakes. But Logan's having none of it. Retreating to her former family home, Professor X and Magneto attempt to talk her down. But when Wolverine gets tired of waiting, battle ensues. Same old Wolverine. 
The amount of times he's got at least one of us damn near half killed. Still, he always buys the first round when we go out drinking. Actually, thinking of that, I've found a couple of good places since I've moved down here. Wolfie, if you're watching, hit me up. But the phoenix will be still no longer. Witness then the ending of Professor Charles Xavier. Charles! Humans and mutants then? A moment of silence for Professor Charles Francis Xavier. Oh man, I can't be this maudlin for this long. In the wilds of America, Magneto is building an army. And Pyro strikes the first blow. Yeah, so back when they were all on the way to Alkali Lake to deal with Stryker, Pyro decided he was better served by being on Magneto's side. Some people just want to watch the world burn, I guess. But the president is only human and orders the army to be equipped with entirely non-metallic cure guns. And so the stage is set for our finale as Magneto's army marches on Alcatraz, the site of the cure labs. Enter the X-Men, who bolster the line. At least until Juggernaut goes for the source of the cure, a mutant himself, Leech. But he won't get Leech. Now you see, Leech here, his mutation suppresses the X gene, though somehow not his own. Sort that one out, science side of Muta. And Wolverine pulls off a successful bait and switch to switch off Magneto. But there's still the little matter of the Phoenix to contend with, which isn't helped by a gung-ho military charge. <laughs> Logan steps up and puts the Phoenix out of our misery. Man, they're dropping like flies today. But there's a lot of people who can share the blame for this whole debacle. And so our movie ends with a new term at the Xavier School. And a ray of hope for an old Jew. So that's the first trilogy taken care of. And how does this one fare? Well, I'm going to be controversial and suggest that this one also deserves its spot on the Mutanthon team. Did Brett Ratner kill off the franchise? Obviously not, as there are several more films yet to follow. And yet, I will concede that of the three, this is the weakest, and also the shortest, weighing in at around 100 minutes. The plot is that much simpler. Cure for mutancy, Magneto won't have it, Assemble's army to stop it, X-Men stop him. Add in the B-plot of Jean being not quite dead, then the unrestrained id, then turning to Wolverine to kill her, and it all seems to be everything we'd want from a threequel. And yet, without the master touch of Singer, the performances seem that much hammier, the script suffering from having Magneto set up as this massive villain against the might of Uncle Sam, and all that is good, when in the last two, we really saw the human side of him. Even through the material, Stuart and McKellen do their best, and even with diminishing amounts of Wolverine, Jackman still holds the attention. But the stunted runtime contracts everything, rushing the flow, and the early jumping around between scenes and setting up of so much, only to lead into a lacklustre action climax. Much as third act set pieces go, all leaves me feeling rather unsatisfied. Overall then, it could have been a lot worse, but it could have been so much better. Still, there's plenty more action to go in this mutant-thon before we're done. But for now, this is your humble host, the magnificent multi-sided mutant Funky M, inviting you to join me next week. As we tell the tale that begins on the day that everyone's favourite fur-bearing, beer-swilling, claw-snicting Canuck discovered that he too was a mutant. Till then, see you around, humans. <laughs>